Hello everybody, A.L. Levy here, and I'm going to unbox Young Robot by Dance Gavin Dance, which was produced and mixed by none other, and, oh yeah, and mastered by none other than Chris Crummett, who is coming on Nail the Mix this October 2018. So if you want to get these tracks and watch Chris show you how it's done, this is the month. Just click the link below and get yourself these tracks. Let's get into this. This is a song called Young Robot, taken off of the Dance Gavin Dance album, Mothership. And in traditional unboxing fashion, let me show you what we got. We got some drums, some bass, some guitars, some clean guitars, a lot of lead guitars, or are those lead vocals? We'll find out. And some flutes, interesting story about the flute, and a lot of screams. Okay, I guess those are lead guitars above. I think these are the vocals. All right. And as per usual, no plugins. There's some basic balancing because let's face it, it's 83 tracks. If we add it all at level zero, it might be harder to get into this unboxing. But this is all just some minor stuff so I can get right into it. And the first thing I want you to notice as I play this is that it sounds damn good right out the gate. If you follow modern, heavier music production, you know who Chris Crummett is. And we all know that Chris Crummett is one of those guys from the modern school who is actually a legit engineer and producer. The reason I say that is not to talk badly about anybody else, but this is a guy who takes in the old, who uses the old school ethos of capturing everything right at the source, using the right gear, um, all that, all that wonderful stuff, but then applies it in a modern context. It is very much bringing the, I guess, the lessons of the old and applying them in new ways. And his productions sound great as a result of it. They sound polished and modern and huge, yet natural, which is quite an achievement it's actually really quite an achievement and this is no break from that tradition of his so let's get into it start with these drums I'm just gonna just solo them so that you can hear what we got all right let me just start by saying these drums sound great Oh yeah. Man, when drums are recorded great, I could get carried away just listening to them. I will not do that to you guys, but I do want to hear through a few different parts just to, you know, just to get an idea of what we've got in store for us. I was talking to Chris about this song and he said that there's a lot of different sections in the song that have to be kind of like unique scenes and be treated differently, you know, while still sounding like a part of the greater whole. So I just want to hear what kind of different drum action we got in this song. Nice, that's so solid.
I love those toms. That is what I love toms to sound like. All right. I'm done kissing the ass of these drums as a whole. Now let me begin kissing their ass as individual mics. So we've got... Doesn't look like he gave us any samples. Here's a kick. Very solid. And here's her snare top. Great sounding snare. Kick and snare. You know, something interesting is that, as we know, the overall drum sound is not created by the direct mics. I mean, the direct drum mics do have a part in that, but a great drum sound, you know, is part direct mic, part overhead, part room. And sometimes, even on great productions, you'll hear the direct mic and it'll be like, plink, plink, and then you'll add the, uh, you'll add the rooms, it'll be like fucking thunder. But in this case, the directs already sound really, really good. I mean, this is solid stuff. Let's hear what it sounds like when I throw in the overheads and what I believe low ribbon, room front, and room top. Those are the, the room tracks, but let's start by adding the overheads to the kick and snare just to get a better picture of what we're working with, and I'll add the rooms. They just kind of bring them to life a little bit. Let's see what these rooms do. Sounds like this room front does a lot for the length. I bet that would sound great, mangled. Yeah, that's just begging to be mangled. That would sound great. Let's hear what this room ribbon, low ribbon is. Oh, wow, I bet you could really enhance, you could really enhance the, uh, the power in the shells with this room mic. Nice going, Chris. I'm gonna just uh, bring this room mic in and turn it up a little. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great drum sound. All right, let's hear what's up with these toms. Chris was cool enough to give us pre-cut toms. Thank you, Chris. And one thing you'll notice is that Chris does like to have a good bit of sustain even in, in his cut toms. You know, some guys will have only a transient and then want to get the sustain out of, say, the rooms or the overheads or the reverbs or, you know, the have the transient come from the natural drum and the sustain from a sample or whatnot. But Chris likes, obviously, to have a good bit of sustain from the natural drum. And the natural drum sounds great, so it's all right. Now, let's hear what the natural, what these toms sound like once you start adding overheads and rooms. Starts coming together. Yep. It's 
great. And then lastly, we have this hat track, which has also been pre-cleaned. I mean, obviously, hat is one of those instruments, one of those symbols that we'll get into all of the other symbol mics. So, you know, use it sparingly. But I think that because there's so much detail work on these hi-hat parts, that it's good to have this hat part, this hat track, that you can bring in for detail when needed. Because these are important parts. You don't want them to get lost. See, it's not like the hat goes away if I mute it. Um, but if, you know, when you start adding the layers and layers of other instrumentation there, you start to lose the nuance of that hat, you have this track to, to help save it. Anyways, these are great sounding drums. Uh, I would say that you can probably get away without any samples on these. And, I mean, if you do use samples... Only use them for reinforcement if you absolutely need to. It's not like you have a wall of super heavy guitars to fight against. Like, there's, uh, there's a lot of space in this mix. Uh, I would recommend trying to see how far you can get with the natural drum sound. Let's move to bass. So we got a bass DI and then two bass amps. Let's just check out the DI first. I'll just turn it up for listening purposes. here with the drums. Everything you need there for a great bass sound. However, we have these amps. Let's check them out. Yeah, that's more like it. All those little noises and things you hear in that bass amp don't matter once everything gets going. That's all. If, you, if you're sitting here zeroing in on solo tracks, you might be like, what are those noises? Just turn on the drums. You'll be like, what noises? That kind of stuff helps a bass track. Case in point. <laughs> Sounds great. All right, let's check out the second bass amp. Let me see if there's just a big volume difference. Yeah, okay, so there's a big volume difference. Um, let me just turn them to the same volume so that we can just hear how different they are without tricking ourselves or close to the same volume. Okay, sounds like the first one is much more full frequency, much bigger low end. Which is going to come in handy because like Chris said, this goes through many, many different changes in the song. As you can see just from looking here, there's a lot of arrangement changes like you might have a part here where there's like very few drums and a shit ton of leads not many vocals and you might not want the hugest bass tone on earth or maybe you do then again 
You have these parts here where there are full-on drums, flutes, vocals, the whole deal. So Chris has given you some options. Let's all take a moment to thank Chris. And this is a great bass sound. I love this amp sound. I love it when people who do Nail the Mix give us great bass amp sounds. Because before I started doing Nail the Mix, and I was mixing for a living, I'd be getting mixes to mix, coming in from all manner of producers, some better than others. And oftentimes the bass amp tracks we would get would just be wholly unusable. Just like total trash, you throw it out and then uh, you, you just proceed with the DI. I love it when we get a good, solid bass amp like this. Together they sound great too. Man, that's funky. Now, with bass lines like that, you could not do the traditional metal thing and just bury the bass or distort the fuck out of it and use it as a part of the, you know, like the lower end of the distorted guitars. You, you need to bring that out, you know, obviously without overtaking the mix, but that is some grade A rhythm section playing. All right, let's move on to the guitars. Let's see what we got here. these appear to be rhythms. And we have no DIs, and that's because this is the tone that was intended by the band and the producer. And there's effects on them that they printed on the way in. I mean, these are the guitars that you're supposed to work with. Obviously, I don't know if all the, the bass amps are supposed to be on, but that's your rhythm tone, much more of a rock tone than you guys are used to. And uh, like I said, you're not going to have that wall of heavy-ass guitars to fight against. That's why I think you don't need to worry about samples so much. Let's hear these clean guitars. <laughs> That's just, that's just nice. Okay, so we have those clean guitars for the intro. And we've got a whole lot of lead guitar. Let's see what's going on here. Chris told me that this would be pretty intricate. It looks like we got lead guitar going through the whole song. Okay, that's cool. So it's not just like leady lead. It's like interesting parts. See what it means by like a scene? That right there is a scene, sets a vibe, has its own unique character. And if you look at the intro, clean guitar and the flute, that's like a whole other scene.
Let's see what the verse scene is like. So a lot of left to right interplay. I bet this makes a lot more sense when you hear the drums. Now let's see what the leads are right here of where they're stacked this high. Oh, I love that. Oh, so this is like a pre-chorus right here. And I can see why Chris printed these effects. These are very specific to the composition. Like, you're not supposed to make these up for yourself. And I know that if Chris was sending this to a different mixer to mix, it would come like this. You wouldn't be getting DI so that you could make up your own sounds. These sounds are part of the composition. All right, let's move on to the chorus. And again, just gonna start with these leads. <laughs> Yep. As you see, every one of these parts sounds completely different. I want to hear where that cool picking is. So dun 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 dun. That's the rhythm guitar. Let's see what is the lead doing. See that by itself it just sounds like you know whatever uh, a part but when you put it all together that that alternate picking stuff that he's doing really works nicely it's really interesting. So it's called Cool Arrangement, my friends. And we're back to a verse, totally different feel here. Let's see what's here, post-chorus. Chorus-ish, okay. All right, this is the intro restated. Nice, okay. Let's uh, just see what the extra tracks are that we've got. I already showed you the flute. Cool story about the flute is that the girlfriend of the guitar player was just visiting the studio and decided to play this flute part, and so they recorded it. So this is some spur-of-the-moment stuff, and a, a good example of why you should be open to creativity in the studio. You never know what greatness will just fall right in your lap. And we've got some claps. Let's see what that's all about. Yes. More flute right here. 
awesome. And then a tambourine right here. Okay, I want to hear what's going on during this flute clap part with everything else. Oh, that's so cool. So the flute is matching the guitar line, as you can tell. Um, I believe that it's the rhythm guitar, not the lead. Because the, the lead is playing something else, but we'll see. I was right. That's just cool arrangement. That's just not stuff you hear every day. Okay, with all that said, none of it matters if you mess this next part up. We have got a lot of vocals here and a great vocalist. So let's get into what we've got. Looks like he quads a lot of stuff, you know. I'm seeing some quads, quite a few. All right, so then let's just start here. What is this? Drink. I mean here. This time won't blame This time won't blame myself. It's been a So we got a straight double right here. This time won't and then an upper octave. This time won't and then okay, so he does the normal octave, doubles it, up an octave, doubles it. This time won't This time won't blame myself. It's been a long time coming. It sounds great. I'm gonna guess it's the same thing here. Come and follow me, they're gonna follow Cause I'm on the inside and they're on the outside It's such a pleasure getting great vocal tracks. Come and follow me, they're gonna follow Cause I'm on the inside and they're on the outside Let's see what this is. Don't worry. No! can't stay these are great harmonies great tone of voice great command just unique sound this guy's good Brain! what would we be without a scream so there is a scream drink that love don't i love this it almost does sound like robot singing she said, drink that love, don't demand it, cause baby I can't stand it, when you look so pathetic. Drink that love, it's like a habit. Man, this is some great stuff. So we got that falsetto there. I believe these four harmonies. You look so pathetic. But I can't stop with the rhythm of it. Drink. Very Michael Jackson. I hope that's what was intended. And then no one gets mad at me. You look so pathetic. But I can't stop with the rhythm of it. Drink that love. That love. It's like. Oh, oh, oh. You run. Follow me. They're gonna fall. Alright, in one second, I'm gonna put this all together. But as you can hear, these are very intricate vocals. There's a lot of them. There's harmonies. There's octaves. There's some screaming. They go in and out, all kinds of different patterns. There's multiple lines going at once. You've got a lot of work cut out for you with these vocals. Thankfully, they sound great and unique to begin with. But as we just spent a while on the music, you know the music itself, there's a lot to it. And uh, you don't want to lose any of that either. I even missed some vocals down here, some ahs and some dubs. Let me check those out real quick. Have it. I... Oh, 
okay. Life is complete. You have your Oz choir. So like I was saying, the music itself is already really intricate. It's got a lot of great unique stuff that you don't want to lose. And it's a challenge in and of itself to get a good mix. And you can't even have a static mix. It's got to change every part. But then you throw in these vocals that are all over the place in a good way and do so many different things. This is going to be a tough mix because these vocals have to stay up front, you know, like great vocals do. But then that music can't get lost. You can't lose the focus on that great music. Now let's just hear these oohs and ahs just cause. I, I gotta have it all. Oh, 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 oh. You run enough the back. All right, let's play through a few of these parts just so that you can hear everything together now. This time won't play myself. It's been a long time coming, been a long time coming. This time I know you well. It's been a long time coming, been a long time coming. Follow me. Drink that love, don't demand it. Cause baby, I can't stand it when you look so pathetic. You know I gotta have it I, I gotta have it all I wish I didn't miss this I, I, I gotta have it all They call me hedonistic Can't stop with the rhythm Gotta have it all I'll make them kiss This session's great this is going to be a lot of fun to mix. And if you want to mix it, just click the link below. This is actually happening now, October 2018, Now the Mix, with Chris Crummett and Dance Gavin Dance. And this is a song called Young Robot off of their Mothership album. And uh, I'm A.L. Levy with URM Academy, Nail the Mix, and happy mixing to you. <laughs>